Hello, this is a video on some of the basic math functions of Microsoft Excel <clears throat> that should help you get started with the world of data analysis. So I have some kind of a basic spreadsheet set up here and the first thing I want to run through is the use of basic multiplication, subtraction, um, division, and addition functions. And what you end up doing is typing in formulas that basically fit this basic format. So for this um, cell right here, if I'm trying to add in these two figures together, which we're going to call this complications, we're going to say that, it, just for purposes of discussion, that it's equal to deaths and line infections. So it's going to follow this kind of format here. So it's going to be equals to D2 plus E2. And despite the fact that I have things in capitals here, this is not case sensitive. And it's going to give you the answer for. Another way of getting that, which is much easier, is start out with the equal sign, click D2 plus click E2, and you see that that same formula is being generated there. And again, um, as covered in one of the other films, when you click a cell, and you look at the formula bar, it tells you whether it's a formula, which is shown here, versus just a number that's been entered in, as is, you know, the other cases. So once you basically, if, if the idea is that this whole column is going to consist of the same kind of formula replicated up and down, what you can do is you just copy that and either drag that cell down if it's a small number like this, or, sorry, um, or copy that and just select the array of cells that you want to paste the function and push the paste command. Um, basically, control um, V or command V on a Macintosh, and that gets you that same kind of formula moved right on down. So for a multiplication example, we're going to say occupancy is equal to the number of patients times their length of stay, and that just tells you how many beds are occupied by people that length of stay. And so again, you're using the star, kind of like a dot, using multiplication, and that can be copied down as well. For division, you guessed it, is equals, um, let's see, mortality rates, so we're gonna say deaths over patients. And this has already been formatted as percent, and, and you probably are not gonna see that Initially, when you do this, it's going to be a number, and it's just going to look something completely unruly, like, um, I don't know, like that, for example. <clears throat> so getting that to a percent requires going to the format dialog box and actually clicking percent. So I just didn't want to give you um, any uh, sense that that's going to happen automatically. And so now we want to do infection rate, which is also going to equal... Um, the infections over the number of patients. And so it'd be tempting to think, wow, if we could just copy this and paste it here, um, we would get our result. But no, the problem is, is this mortality rate is basically in computer ease. The number of the value that's one, two, three, four boxes to the left over the value that's five boxes to the left. And so when we copy that here, we're getting four boxes to the left over five boxes to the left, with that, which has absolutely nothing to do with the number you're trying to get. So if your plan is to have a bunch of values that all refer to the same denominator as you would for mortality rate, infection rate, and complication rate, what you can do is you can anchor one of, you can anchor the denominator, in which case it's the values in column C um, you can anchor it in the following way, and that's type a dollar sign in front of the C when you first set up that equation. Now look what happens. I'm pasting it over here, and now that's actually showing the line infection rate over the number of patients, just as mortality rate was the mortality over the number of patients. And then once you've anchored that, um, the denominator column C, Look what happens when you copy that and then paste it horizontally. 
this one is complications. Again, it's anchored to column C, and we saw that infections are done in the same way. So, I mean, here's like the really easy shortcut too, is once you've kind of set this thing up in this manner, you can essentially copy this cell and paste it for this whole array, and you're gonna get the answers that you're after. And so what's happening is when you're anchoring a denominator, you, no matter what you do um, in this dimension of going horizontally, that denominator will be the same. But as you go vertically on down, look at the formulas. See, you're anchoring to column C, but you're moving up and down to columns four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, if that makes sense. So that's a really powerful tool. And you can imagine that if this if you're using the same denominator for 10 values all the way to the right and thousands deep um, in the fact that you could just paste this command over that huge array of cells in a matter of five or ten seconds is just amazingly fast compared to some of the manual setup that you'd have to do otherwise. So a couple other functions that um, are good for just kind of quick assessment. One is just summing values of columns. So if you just want to have the sum of these columns here, you would type, type equals sum, and then you open up some brackets, drag the whole array that you're after, push the right-hand bracket, and then return. And sorry, that's a little bit small. And that gives you the sum of that column. And just, and you guess it, you can kind of move that um, right and left as you need and to um, you know kind of replicate that same formula. If there's ever, ever any question about what the formula is, there's two ways of looking at it. One is just click the box and see what the formula is up here. The other one is actually double clicking the box and what that'll do is highlight the area that you are um, summing, which is kind of cool. The thing is, is one, if you double click that box, and if you start clicking other boxes, it starts polluting your formula with other things. So you've got to really basically, um, once you've clicked the box to see what the formula is, the only way out is you've got to hit return to preserve that formula. But as you saw, you know, as I screwed things up, and this is how I do screw things up quite a bit, um, if it looks like the things are screwed up, rather than kind of going back and trying to figure out what you did, just hit return, know that you've got a messed up value, and then hit Command Z and just go back to where you were before. Okay, a couple more loose ends on data. Often it's really important to be able to serial number your data, and that way you can get patient names out of the way and handle the data in a de-identified manner. This is how you do it. So the first patient is gonna be one, and the second one you wanna have two and so forth. Here's the formula. Equals one plus whatever is above it. See how that turns into two. 
So if you copy this and just drag it on down, look what you get. You get a nice numbered array. And so these are now serial numbered patients that you can sort, play with, whatever. And, um, you know, no worries about the identified data. So you can see here that we have these organized according to like male, female, and so forth. So what I'm going to do is something um, kind of fun. I am going to sort these according to gender. And let's see what happens. Everything completely falls apart as far as my patient numbering. Well, why did that happen? Turns out to be that this is the true number one. In fact, if I click this, I can see in the formula box that it's one. And everything else is asking it to add one to whatever is above it. And so once you have one, it starts numbering very nicely. But these, this was never the original number two, and who knows what the other ones were. So here's the problem is you've sorted something on one basis, and this formula has gone for a ride completely. Um, that can't happen. That will just create chaos. Here's your way around it. So what you want to do is go up here and just copy all these formulas and then just push Command C and then paste them as values. And now take a look as I click around. What you see in the formula bar is a bunch of numbers, not values. And now when I go ahead and sort things as I wish, I think we did it based on gender earlier, um, the numbers are preserved. One other thing that's nice to do is often when you have binary data like dead, alive, died, didn't die, transferred, male, male, female, it's good to come up with a number code where things are either zeros or ones. And that way you can sum columns of data and just say, okay, you know, tell me how many ones are there. And if ones are males and you know that you've looked at 10,000 values and you've got 9,000 number ones, then you can say, ah, I'm 90% male. So here's how you transform some of this number data or letter data into numbers or just changing things in general. You select it and then you go to replace and then you say, okay, I want females or F to be replaced by zeros. You type them zero and then you push replace all. All, see all these zeros? Those are formerly females. And now I want to turn M's into ones, replace them all. And now I've just closed these dialog boxes and we have males and females. And so if you, you know, want to say, Hey, what percentage of my population is male? I just can select that whole column there and say, okay, the count is 16 and the sum is eight. How convenient it's 50%. Um, and there's much more complex analysis um, formulas that you can subject this data to. So as much as you can do binary, go for it. All right, that's the end of the math section. So hope this um, provided some um, help in getting you going with spreadsheets and data analysis. Thanks.